Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled, my name is Shaggy, and today I'm just going to give you my quick first impressions of Star Wars Outer Rim and the brand new Unfinished Business expansion. I've done a complete solo playthrough using the expansion, so please go check that out. In this video I'm going to either assume you've watched the playthrough or you know how the base game and the expansion works. Now I'm going to be mostly talking about the solo game, but I've also played this at two player, just one time, so I'll give you a little quick impressions of that as well. The first thing I should mention, and I've mentioned this in other videos, is that I'm not like a huge Star Wars fan. I like it, and that's about where it ends, right? So while I'm playing this game, I'm, you know, I'm probably mispronouncing everything. I'm missing out on all the lore. I mean, I'm sure if you're a big fan, you know all these places and all the people and, you know, a lot of these events might be referencing actual things that have happened. I don't know any of that. So keep that in mind as I give my thoughts. I think there's a ton of theme here for fans of the show, but I really can't speak to that so much. The other thing I should mention is that pick up and deliver as a mechanism, which is what's going on here primarily, is not necessarily my favorite thing in games. I don't hate it, but it's not something that I really gravitate towards usually. That said, I think this is my favorite pick up and deliver game. I think it's great, and you probably already knew that because I did a full playthrough of it. I don't do full playthroughs of games that I don't think are great. Obviously, I'm not going to teach you a game that I don't think you should play. So I really like this. And I've played the base game before the expansion. I can't remember exactly how many times, but multiple times I played the base game before the expansion. The expansion doesn't have a lot of components, but it adds a lot to the game. The base game was lacking a little bit. Certainly you can get several plays out of it, but I was already feeling that it was a little stale and needing more. And thankfully the expansion adds exactly what is needed. This is the second time that I'm, I'm talking about a game where this is the case, but the expansion sort of completes the base game here. It's fairly essential. I will never play without the expansion. And honestly, I wouldn't play the base game more than a couple of times maybe without the expansion. Again, this is not my favorite thing because the expansion is fairly overpriced, but this is a fantasy flight game, right? So this has been their MO for a long time. This doesn't, I think, surprise anybody that a fantasy flight base game needs an expansion to be complete. So what does the expansion add that's so necessary? Well, first of all, it adds new cards. I mean, it doubles the size of basically every single one of those market decks. I think it's also doubling the size of all of those encounter decks as well. You're getting eight new characters. You're getting a bunch more data bank cards as well. So you're adding all these new types of events. You're getting a ton of cards here that are increasing the replayability and variability of the game really dramatically. And honestly, the expansion would be essential just from that alone. You're also getting those orange contact tokens, which are incredible. Those are great. All of those are like these iconic characters. And you also have all these new bounties and you can even have players in the game. You can have bounties for their characters. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff in the expansion that's adding interaction between the players. You know, there's there's like multiplayer jobs and there's jobs that, you know, players can sort of oppose the job. And there's also these favors, which is a new thing that adds a kind of negotiation between the players where you can request a favor from another opponent. And that favor could be like borrowing one of their skills to use in a test that you might have or getting to roll an extra combat die or being able to move one extra space when you're flying. So you can ask another player for that favor and negotiate using either credits where you can just pay them for it, or you can give them a debt token, which they can sort of cash in in order to get a favor of their own when they want it. You can kind of like be trading and negotiating this stuff to you know, give you a little leg up if you need it. It's done in a really cool way where, you know, it even works in a two-player game. Even though you have that sort of zero-sum nature, you might be like, yeah, sure. You take a favor now, I'll take a favor later. They can be different and, you know, it just works out. It's really nice. I think all the stuff that they've added here really does help the multiplayer game. Like I said, I played it at two-player once and we really had a great time. It's still, you know, mostly you're doing your own thing. 
but there's you definitely have more interest in what your opponent is doing now, and I think that's really great. Now the favor thing, you can't use that in a solo game, but what they've they've improved the solo game dramatically as well. Now every character has a unique AI card that gets shuffled in, which gives each AI character sort of a unique feel. And now you can also have an AI opponent who is a bounty hunter, and there's a whole separate sort of rule set for exactly how uh, you know the AI works as a bounty hunter. So you just have a lot more variety, and the whole thing just seems to run a lot more smoothly. I really love the AI system here. It's very simple. As you saw in the playthrough, you just run down this quick little easy checklist. Their turns are over very quickly. It's, it's really my kind of AI system. I really love it. But of all the things that the expansion adds, my favorite by far is the ambitions. As you saw in the playthrough, you get to draw two, pick one of them, and that sets up this overarching series of things that you need to take care of while you're doing all the other stuff. It doesn't replace anything. You still have to get your, you know, eight fame, just as you always did by, you know, collecting and delivering cargo or, you know, going after bounties. You still got to do all that stuff. But now you have this overarching journey that you have to go on that gives you a very strong direction right at the start of the game, which I really like. You know, you saw in the playthrough, I wanted to explore the galaxy. And so... I needed to find a ship that would get me a lot of movement, right? I needed to constantly be flying around, having those encounters on the planets, collecting those cards. It meant I couldn't do a lot of doubling back, right? I was kind of having to move in one direction and try to find opportunities along the way. Alternatively, I could have wanted to be like, you know, uh, the most fearsome pirate in the galaxy, in which case I would have been doing a ton of fighting and going after patrols and having all these combats. Those ambitions, it adds the perfect amount of extra stuff to think about on top of the great stuff that you were already doing in the base game. A couple of potential negatives that I just want to point out. The first is that the dice can be pretty swingy. Now you're doing a lot of rolling to resolve, but there are a ton of ways of mitigating things, and you saw that in the playthrough. My character had a special ability that let her really mitigate the dice, and it, we used it to great effect. But you are rolling d8s, and so it just it feels a lot swingier than usual. And I think you saw that in the playthrough. I was getting super lucky with the dice rolls. I was winning combats I shouldn't have been winning. Uh, I was going in with very low chances and succeeding. So the dice can swing both ways. I've also had it where I just couldn't roll a hit to save my life. In the end, I think it works out because it just puts more focus on getting those abilities that let you mitigate those dice rolls. The second potential negative here, and it's something that I have a problem with in a lot of these different types of adventure style games. Sometimes, because you're combining sort of the story elements and the strategy, sometimes it feels like the optimal play is not necessarily the most fun play. Sometimes you need to take the more boring choice in order to take the strategically sound choice. And that sometimes rubs me the wrong way because when I get into one of these games, I want to have an adventure. I want to do the adventurous things, strategy be damned. And that's not necessarily always how you can play these games in order to win. Now, that's less of a problem for me because I'm more in it for the journey, for the fun. You know, winning is really secondary. And so I don't mind that so much. And you saw that in the playthrough. You know, I'm just going to do the wild choice. I'm going to do the fun choice. And it's not going to always work out. Sometimes it will. I think that's fun. But if you're really focused on strategy and winning, then those two things can come into conflict sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be forced to take the more boring choice. Other than that, I love everything about this. I think the reason I like this game so much is because it, you know, it's not like a storytelling game in the same way that Sleeping Gods is. You don't have a storybook, you're not reading through it. You just have these little snippets. It's just enough flavor, just enough story to let your imagination kind of fill in the blanks of what's going on. You know, it's all just slightly different pick up and deliver. But the fact that you need certain skills or, you know, ooh, you're delivering this illegal cargo. And so you're going to have to test this skill once you get there. It's just enough story. And I really love it. 
And the ambitions add just like just enough complication to just make this the perfect weight, perfect amount to think about. I will absolutely never play a game of this again without those ambitions. And frankly, you know, without the cards being all mixed in and with the out, without the orange contact tokens, those will always be in my games from here on out. Like I said, the, the expansion is completing this game. This is what the base game should have been. I think we're seeing this more and more. We're seeing these expansions come along and complete the base game. And this is an example of that. Now, again, this is this seems to be Fantasy Flight's MO for forever. Right? This is a this is their business model. And I wish it was I wish it wasn't as expensive as it is. But at the end of the day, Star Wars Outer Rim with the unfinished business expansion is gonna get an eight out of ten from me and is definitely my favorite pickup and deliver game. So there you go. That's a big recommendation from me. Please go watch the playthrough. That is a much better way of finding out if this is a game that you might be interested in rather than my opinions. Check out the playthrough. See it for yourself. Well, there you go. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.